Sawete discipulae et discipuline. Nunc est Anglus Historiae. It's History Corner with Mr. Carroll. Today we're going to be looking at the political office of Aedile. Since it's come up a few times now in the Tempus Fabulae. So let's turn to the, Rome, the city of Rome itself and see where this political office kind of originated. So the name seems to be related to the Latin term ades, which is a temple, edifice, or shrine. So it seems that the, in the earliest days, the aedile was in charge of building and repairing the temples and the things that kind of went along with that. We first hear about it in the, politi- in the historical record in 494 BCE, so just a few years after the Roman Republic was created. And at that point, they started as assistants to the tribunes. And so that meant only plebs could run for the office. Now remember in Rome, there are two politi- there are two um, societal classes, the patricians, who kind of were the, one- the rich people in charge of everything, and then the plebs, who was everyone else. But the, being a pleb didn't necessarily mean you were poor. There were very rich plebs, and they demanded rights and um, representation, and that's where they got the office of the Tribune, and then it seems now the office of Aedile. Eventually, as the R- Roman Republic progressed, it kind of loses its plebeian aspect and just becomes an early step in the cursus norum, or the course of honor, which is the political ladder of ancient Rome. The office of Adol kind of fell out of use in the early, early in the Julio-Claudian period because Emperor Augustus and Emperor Tiberius were fearful of the popularity of the Adiles and that the Adiles would be able to kind of um, usurp power and, and wrest power away from them. And so Augustus and Tiberius would give the responsibilities of the Aediles to other people like the Praefectus Urbi or the Prefect of the City or the Curatores Vivarium or the Caretakers of the Roads um, because they wanted to kind of lo- dampen the power of the Aediles. Although it does seem to last as a political office until Emperor Gordian III during the crisis of the 3rd century. That's the last time we hear mention of Aediles in the city of Rome itself. However, in Romanized cities and colonies, it continues as a political office because Julius Caesar in 45 BCE set up the Lex Iulia Municipalis, or the municipal laws of Julius. And in there, he set up how a a city government would run with the advisory council, or the decoria, which is like 10 to 100 men, the duo weary, or the two men, which are the mayors of the town, and then the aediles, which would deal with the public work offices. So the term aedile gets used in the countryside a lot, but in the city of Rome, it falls out during the Julio-Claudian period. Now, in the city of Rome, there were up to six different aediles. All right. First, we started with the two original plebeian aediles, only plebs could run for it, and it kind of was a stopping point if you were a pleb. You had to get, you had to become a patrician to move into the other branches of government. The plebeian aediles were always in charge of certain games in certain sections of Rome. The curile aediles were added in 367 BCE, and they were added because the Senate wanted to get more religious festivals going in Rome. And the plebeian aediles were like, no way, we can't do it, no, too much work. And so they're like, the senators were like, fine, we'll just make two more political offices. The curial aediles kind of serve as a wealth check on people running for political office. Up to this point, you didn't have to be that wealthy to be a quaestor or to be kind of an aedile. But if you didn't really bring your own money to the office of aedile, what this the the budget the Senate gave you wasn't enough to kind of get the the attention of the people. So only those who were wealthy enough to kind of add their own money and do really, really extraordinary gains and make really, really extraordinary improvements to the city were able to then advance to the positions of praetor and council. So it kind of serves as a wealth check. It's like, are you wealthy enough to be these other positions? Good. And you can you know move on from there. Um, if you didn't bring your own b- bank account to the Curial Adile ship, you kind of, that's where you stopped in the political ladder. And then Julius Caesar in 44 BCE added two more 
Adiles, the Cereales Adiles, Adiles, and they dealt specifically with the grain supply, and they were there to make sure um, that it was there was enough grain for everyone and they also had were in charge of specific games the ludi cariales the 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 games of Kier series now what were the duties of an adil they were the curatores urbi or the caretakers of the city they enforced public decency with fines if needed, and this meant swearing or public indecency or intoxication, like all any kind of public decency things. And all the money, of course, would go back to the maintenance of the city. And they also maintained infrastructure through repairs and cleaning. They put out notices that you weren't allowed to set up your, your cart to sell goods in the street. They made sure streets were kept clear of waste um, or construction materials. They were kind of all taking care of all the public works. If the drains were broken, they would fix them. If the baths needed were upkeep, they would be they the Adiles were in charge of that. They also were taking care known as the curatores anoi or the the wheat caretakers. Now it wasn't just wheat, but it was more of the market they were in charge of. They would monitor markets, especially the cattle and slaves, to make sure people were um, being fair in those markets. They would prevent usury and fraud, so they would prevent loan sharks um, and people kind of using false weights to gain to cheat other people. And as we saw with Julius Caesar's two additional ones, they were also in charge of making sure there was enough grain for the dole for those who were the poorest in the city. They were also known as the curatores ludorum que solemnium, so the caretakers of the games and the religious festive, religious things. Now, in ancient Rome, games were often tied with religious festivals. It's different from today in modern in the modern United States, where you would go to a basketball game and then go to church separately. Like it, for the Romans, those were one and the same. So they regulated public festivals. The plebeian aediles were often in charge of the ludi pleb plebi, or the plebeian games, while the curile aediles were always in charge of the ludi romani and the ludi meganales. And any other games were kind of split between uh, them from that point on. They were the ones who had to host games. And at first they had a, a budget from the state, um, but... Like I said before, they had to supplement it with their own money if they expected to advance up the ladder of the Cursus Sonorum to get any higher offices, because the budget just wasn't enough for that. Now, as we mentioned before, in the time of Augustus and Tiberius, it, the position kind of falls out of favor, um, because th anyone who puts on the games are going to be popular with the Roman people. And so in the city of Rome itself, we don't really see the office of Aedile, but we see it all over the empire, all over the place. These are just two inscriptions found in Pompeii and Herculaneum, showing that the position is still alive and well in the 60s and 70s CE. Um, and they're in, still in charge of similar things. The first top one is an uh, election notice. Um, Gaius Iulium Publibium Aedilus uh, oro vos facitis panem bonum fert, which basically means, um, I beg that you will make Gaius Julius Polybius a dial. He makes good bread. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that he necessarily makes the bread himself, but he pro it shows that he's dealing with the grain supply in the city of Pompeii. The one below is also seen on the the wall there, off to the right. Um, and it basically sums up as um, Marcus Aurelius Paulus, the Aedile, forbids you from dumping excrement in this area. And this area is near the water tower, so he's maintaining the water supply here. Um, and there will be a fine um, uh, uh, given to people who do are caught dumping excrement. And now he's talking about the chamber pots that would be found in a lot of Roman houses who were not wealthy enough to connect to the Roman, the main water supply. And so he's trying to keep the streets clean and public decency and, and the water supply safe. So that kind of summarizes what the position of the Aedile is. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below um, in the comments and look forward to having you guys come back here next time.